So let's jump right into it in regards to the big coaching staff change when it comes to the Houston Cougars football team. And of course, that was a really wide, a bit of a controversial, not even a bit, it was a controversial position from the Houston coaching staff this past season, especially when it came to the offensive struggles early on in the season. Shannon Dawson heading over to Miami to take a similar role with the Hurricane. What are your initial thoughts on the move? And just general, what do you think? Where do you think Houston goes from here? I mean, good um, for Dawson, I guess, to go to Miami, a team that's still trying to resurrect their program. So if he's able to resurrect their offense, he would get a lot of credit because they haven't been to Miami that um, college fans like myself are accustomed to seeing. And so, I mean, congratulate him on the move. I think it's a, it's a good job. It's a good opportunity for him to continue to improve himself. But from a Houston perspective, I, I like the move to move on from Dawson. I think he was inconsistent in his role and play calling and sticking to a strategy. I know every game is a different strategy in football, but it's inconsistent. Um, it, had, it wasn't reported and it wasn't confirmed, but I believe Dana took over play calling um, late in the season due to that inconsistency from Dawson. So I think it's a good move. I think Houston – Offense still is predicated around Dana's system, which is under Mike Lee's tree. And so um, not really a, a, a big move. I wonder who will Houston, who are they replacing? But whoever they replace him is still going to run the Dana system. And so it, it really, really, in essence, in my opinion, it matters. But it, I guess it, it doesn't matter if that makes sense. Well, I think it matters from a continuity standpoint now. Regardless, I think you bring up a great point. There was certainly, when you look at tw the 2022 Houston Cougars offense, there was kind of a before and after. And that was really the Memphis game. And in particular, it started the fourth quarter of the Memphis game. When Houston was down by 19 points, it seemed like they were, it seemed like the season was on the brink of falling apart, to be honest. that They, they had just lost a few conference games. The, the fan perspective after the three, losses I think they had just lost to Tulane and they had obviously lost to Kansas Texas Tech in non-conference a lot of it seemed like it, it was just falling apart and something clicked in that fourth quarter of the Memphis game we're not sure if like you said Officially, your Dana Horace had never necessarily acknowledged from a media standpoint that there had been a switch in offensive play caller, but something changed. Something changed from that standpoint and overall to finish the conference game in 2022, Houston ended up actually having one of the best offenses in the conference from the American Athletic Conference. And from a standpoint of points per game, they were second just behind SMU, who Houston Cougar fans know very well how close in that SMU offense was. But they were averaging 36.1 points a game by the time the season ended. Now, I think there was still... A, a big part of it had to do with the level of competition that they were playing heading down the stretch against the American because you could still see it at times in stretches when that offense, I mean, just think of the bowl game in the last game of the season against Louisiana it had its struggles at times. And I think that was really the biggest demoralizer from a fan perspective when you when they played against Texas Tech, against Kansas and Tulane, who, I mean, we saw the season, they ended up having, they ended up giving USC fits with their Heisman winning quarterback. If they were able to do that to USC, that was a level of competition that Houston struggled with. So I think you can attribute that, that, that had a big reason to do with the turnaround, but it was something that, like you mentioned in regards to Dana Hogerson running the Hogerson system, Going back two seasons ago to the 2021 year when Houston went 12-2 and two and they had a lot more consistent success on that side of the ball. And really it was kind of headlined by running back Alton McCaskill and then the spectacular freshman season that he had. But for a majority of the stretch during that 2021 year, it was Dana Holgerson calling plays. And kind of similar that Memphis is intertwined in this. Holgerson said on the record here, he said it a few times during the 2022 season, but at some point after they played Memphis or maybe even – leading up to that Memphis game and then when they played UConn to end the 2021 season Hogerson said he felt burnt out and he needed to you know kind of give away those play calling duties to someone else in this case it was Shannon Dawson just because he felt much more comfortable uh, wanting to be able to focus on bigger pictures on game days when it came to a coaching perspective and that's the reason why Dawson overtook the plays in the 2021 season, again, it was a much smaller sample size, but against Connecticut, against Memphis, it didn't look like there was much of a drop-off until that Cincinnati game where 
they struggled again when they faced one of those top tier defenses. Yeah, and I think going into the Big 12, a conference that he's familiar with, the defenses that he's familiar with, he's going to see. I don't think it's a bad idea for, to him to begin Houston's first season in the Big 12 to call plays to make that transition even better. And also taking into account having a, uh, a quarterback with unexperience um, at Houston. I mean, I know if, if Smith wins the job, he has some experience, but he's still unexperienced in Houston system at Houston. So whether it's Coley or Smith, you have an unexperienced quarterback that I think he'll make that transition even better. I mean, I know, like you mentioned, he wanted to kind of relieve some of his duties because he was feeling um, how you said he was feeling. And so, I mean, you're the, you're the head coach. You you're brought here because of your offensive mind, not because of, well, because of your offensive mind. I won't say what I was about to say. And so I, I think it would be a good idea and a smart idea for him to do so. Or, I mean, if it is to hire someone who he feels confident, confident in enough to call the plays and run the system that they are running. But regardless, I think the focus, I don't want to say should shift in regards to running the ball more, but I think the strength of the team next year will be in the backfield with Austin McCaskill, Brandon Campbell, and, and Schneed, and the running backs that they have and the offensive line um, will be um, – have a lot of chemistry together, a lot of snaps under their belt together. So I think that would be a strength as well. You got a lot of talent on the outside, but with that inconsistency at quarterback, you you want to probably ease them into a lot of games and lean on the running game and get your play action game to take advantage of some of those one on one matchups that you'll see on the outside. There's a couple of ways we can look at it. And before we do, I think kind of the the biggest sentiment during the course of 2022 season from fans was they wanted Dana Hogerson to oversee that play calling duty again. Now, I think it's something that at this point, it's still very early just in terms of how Houston will adjust. According to uh, the football scoop dot com, the Houston Cougars have already made changes on their coaching staff and according to the football scoop Michael Burkett who was former quarterback at the University of Kentucky and West Virginia he was on the UH coaching staff this past season as an offensive analyst he's been promoted to be the new quarterbacks coach for the Houston Cougars now of course that's a report as of us recording this by the football scoop.com the University of Houston program at, at this time has not confirmed any moves officially when it comes to their coaching staff but I'm sure that's going to be coming shortly a source confirmed that Dawson is heading to Miami so that's obviously that's official now it's just about well, who's going to be the next person that comes in here and either fills that role it looks like uh, Burkhead's going to be the one that takes over the off the quarterback position but that's not entirely that report, I didn't mention whether that includes overseeing play calling or that could be someone else. Now, of course, with this being a hot topic, like I mentioned, that, that offensive coordinator position, you know, whether it's right or wrong, Dawson kind of became one of the – he he came, he became a trending coach on the Houston staff, and it wasn't for a good reason. So, obviously, when you look at the news today, it's kind of a mixed reaction from the Houston Cougars fans. It's not – really that mixed if you look at it more people are are rather yeah. happy to see him gone yeah. and you know it might be the best for both sides just in terms of getting a chance to to move on to to different teams different spaces being in different environments from both sides but obviously if us we're going to focus on a houston perspective so we asked people on social media kind of what is their big board for potential staffs and of course the big name and i think this is the the reach from a standpoint of who they would like to see, but it's Cliff Kingsbury, Cliff Kingsbury, who just left his head coaching position or he's fired from his head coaching position in the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals. Of course, this is at a Matthew seven one three on Twitter. He mentioned a few names: Jake Spavidal, Chris Jackson, Malcolm Kelly, and other people as well. Jacob Houston fan zero zero, who's always in tune with Houston sports. He says he'd love to see Dana Hogerson be responsible for play calling. Now he thinks an offensive coordinator will help Hogerson out when it comes to being able to share those responsibilities. But he feels that Hogerson calling plays is the best for the Houston Cougars. Now at the Texas Juan on Twitter and. Brian Ellis or Mike Blyas. I'm going to butcher that last name. But, Dan, I'm looking for you. Who's kind of a name that you would like to see? Or do you think that maybe the best move for Houston is to have Hogerson take over those play calling responsibilities as well? Cliff Kingsbury, do you think that's any possibility at all? Do you think that's a, that's a stretch of the imagination? 
I wouldn't mind Cliff Kingsbury either. I think he he's more of closer to the the leech spread as far as throwing, 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 throwing versus Dana. I think Dana runs it more than Leach and Kingsbury. So I wouldn't I wouldn't mind him, but I wouldn't mm, I wouldn't be mad at the hire, but he wouldn't be my first choice. He wouldn't be my first choice. How realistic do you think it is? Because I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's realistic at all. I see Kingsbury in Houston, but you never know. I don't think so. I think he has a lot of money right now. I wouldn't. I think he'll probably sit out for a couple of years or two before he joins the ranks because his pockets is is looking really good. Not to count the man's pockets or nothing, but I mean he 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 definitely um cashed in on his time in Arizona. I'll say that. And so, I mean, but you never know. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad at that hire, but at the same time, I feel like he would have to adjust his philosophy some to what Hogerson would want to do in regards to running the football more. Mm-hmm. I think kind of a name to keep an eye on who's already a new addition to the staff, but that's Emanagavi. I believe that's how you say his full name, but he came from Tulane. Obviously, again, we mentioned the Green Wave and the success they had during the season. He originally came in just to oversee the offensive line and the running game for the Houston Cougars. But seeing the success that he had at Tulane, maybe potentially he could fill in to be an offensive corner that oversees the entire offense. We're not entirely too sure about that. Again, a lot of it's speculation. A lot of it right now, here's saying until Houston officially does announce their coaching moves, it's speculation. So, of course, we want to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Who would you like to see be the next offensive coordinator for the Houston Cougars, or who would you like to be see be the one that is calling plays for the Houston Cougars? Is it Dana Holgerson? That someone on the staff could it be Kingsbury? Do you think that could be a realistic feature? Be sure to leave your feedback in the comment section if you're watching this on YouTube.